Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this episode, we'll be painting a landscape environment from scratch. I'll talk to you about composition, values and colors, so stay tuned till the end to see how the final image turned out. My name is Victor, I'm a concept artist working in the video games industry, and I really hope you guys will enjoy this video and find it helpful. So let's start! So time-wise, the painting process took roughly under two hours. And the first thing I did after deciding on the subject matter is to gather up some reference. A couple of reference images from the internet would make a great starting point. And afterwards I continue with a very simple line work sketch. Now I'm not an experienced draftsman, that's why I try to do these sketches as often as possible, maybe to slowly improve, but I never go in detail, just a few lines for me is enough to understand the composition and the overall direction. And that being said, it's not always my preferred method. You've probably seen uh, in the previous videos on this channel that sometimes I start with a black and white value sketch, a, a sketch you know uh, oriented for a composition. Try to understand, you know, the the value matrix, the lighting, the mood of the painting. And that's that's really uh, oftentimes my preferred method because. Uh, if you do that and you're happy with it, uh, you can understand what kind of values you want to achieve. Then you can just trace the lines on top of it and then work with color, value, you know, atmosphere and all that interesting stuff. Now you can see me adjusting the proportions a little bit, just trying to adjust the main elements. And for, for a while I would really have my doubts about this rock that I placed on the left. It's kind of a bit annoying and eventually I decided to take it take it off completely and sort of open up that area, kind of bring a little bit more air in the scene from the left corner. Okay, another important aspect worth mentioning is the way you think about your values. Now this is really important because um, if you have great values or if you don't, that can make or break the whole image. It doesn't matter what kind of fancy color combinations you figure out you know, in your scene or, or how much details you're adding and sort of describing materials really neatly. But if your value metric is not working, if your you know, composition based on your decisions is not working, then that doesn't really matter because it's just not gonna work as, as well as it could. Yeah, that's one thing that I'm always trying to keep in mind is to group my values and try to have things as readable as possible. I guess a couple of ways to do that would be to sometimes check your image in black and white. I often do that, I have a hotkey for it. I guess in some future video I will give you a few hotkey settings that are comfortable for me at least. Another one would be to kind of like look at your image from afar, so you can either step you know, a few steps away from the screen or zoom it out so that you can see the image from afar and understand how you group those values, what kind of messes you have in your image and if they work well. You can also squint your eyes, make some decisions based on that. All right, so these are a few ways you can control and manage your values better. And actually for this video, I think the happiest I was with this image was at around second or third minute mark. There were just a few values put down and everything was quite readable. Composition, everything worked sort of in a way. The funny thing is uh, once you have that step, once you have you know things figured out at start and everything looks more or less nice, for the rest of the process till the end of the image, your job is just to not mess things up. And it's quite funny, but uh, that's how things are. Once you have that done and it works, then you have to pack in more information, right? You have to describe the forms, uh, the planes, uh, you know, work on the focal point, uh, add a light source, you know, describe the materials, pack a lot of additional information on top of what you have. And you have to do that whilst not making things less clear, less readable, and try to sort of keep that in mind at all times. Because for me, for example, it's quite challenging um, to make sure that I didn't mess up something. Uh, and I'm constantly backtracking, trying to analyze my you know, value groups, if uh, they are separated enough, if everything is readable, if my focal point is consistent with the rest of the image and so on. Because sometimes you're kind of like tempted to add more details and to kind of enlarge the value range in some areas. And that in return makes the image very contrasty, not really realistic and uh, it's really hard to improve it from there. So uh, I would say it's better to work slowly, at least in, in the beginning, 
making you know very calculated brush strokes, uh, being decisive about your values, and uh, you know things will turn out much better from there. You will actually paint overall much faster if you're being really deliberate with your brush strokes and you're you know, really thinking about it then if you would try to cover a big area with you know fast brush strokes and doodling in one spot when especially sometimes i was experiencing things like whenever i don't know what to you know, how to manage an area i i just doodle in in one spot and you know this creates a mess kind of very very you know negative result in such cases you just stop think about it um, move to another area that you know how to you know, continue develop and then come back with a little bit of a fresh mind and try to solve that problematic spot in the same manner we talked about until now at first i didn't think that the castle is going to be so exposed since i had that uh, huge rock on the left side but now i'm thinking what if the whole castle is sort of covered in some fog or maybe some mysterious atmosphere thingy and uh, it kind of uncovers itself only when you reach it and when you're close by so i, I thought maybe this type of you know story might work and at this point in the process i guess it's really hard to see any particular stages because it's not like in the beginning when you knew that, okay, I make my composition sketch, I make my line work sketch, I then block in the flat color, the planes, and then work on the form, work on the lighting, and so on. Now you're at a step when you kind of have to roam around your painting, add details here and there, work on your focal point, gradually uh, making the image more consistent. And I guess a good way to pursue this is to split your practices into specific goals. For example, today I'm gonna work on uh, achieving a good composition, tomorrow colors, uh, the next day values, and so on. There are plenty of subjects you can choose from. And I think by doing this, you will you know, achieve greater results by actively thinking and trying to improve in a specific area. And with practice, maybe I will you know, be able to cover more things at the same time. Uh, but for now, just thinking about a couple or one specific thing, I think works just great. Now I'm spending a little bit of time on the main character, trying to add some material information, adjust the shape, uh, kind of design his clothes a bit better. And I'm also looking at the castle, trying to figure out if it's consistent enough, if I should come down some areas, remove or add more details and so on. Now for this type of sketches, uh, from the technical aspect of things, there's not a lot mentioned. I'm just building layer upon layer, and whenever I see that a level of details that I just added doesn't work, I just delete that layer and start all over. There's no point in fixing it, and that's pretty much it. And at a certain point, I also collapse all the layers and work from there as well. All right, let's have a look at the final image. Uh, a couple of things I added, uh, a little bit more details for our main character, a tiny bit of adjustments in color and value just to make things a bit more readable and that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful if you did please like and subscribe it helps a ton also don't forget to ask any questions you have in the comment section i'm trying to answer all of them thank you again so much for sticking till the end of the video i hope to see you in the next one coming soon